sports editor has had the privilege of chatting to Denon Spriggs. When it comes to sport and being motivated and setting goals and doing your best to achieve those goals, this is the man to listen to. Denon has come a long way and continues to make the best of every opportunity that he gets. Enjoy the story. I grew up in the small town of Matatiela in the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. And it was here at a young age um, where I found my passion and love for football. Um, we would play football in the streets and on the school field like late into the evening until the sun would go down. And when the sun was down, that would pretty much signal the end of the session, you know, the end of the game because we couldn't see the ball anymore. And, you know, our mothers wanted us home when the sun was down. So, I mean, if that wasn't the case, we'd probably be still playing. It was such a um, great life growing up in such a small town, you know. You get close with your community, with your environment, your school. Everyone knows everyone. And, you know, it's kind of like a small pond, though. That's the one one thing about it. So I always wanted to leave Matatiela to pursue bigger things. And when I got to the age when it was time to start high school, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to St. Charles College. They accepted me. Um, the school in Peter Marisburg became my home for the next five years of my life. And one of the things I was most excited about was that they offered soccer, something that was not offered in my hometown, even though I used to play with my friends all the time. You know, and so I went in 2010, I started at St. Charles College in Peter Marisburg, and I remember this is where I would play my first official football game with referees and big goals and timekeepers and it was the real deal. I really thought that I had made it big time here. And you know, I really enjoyed my five years there. My last two years at St. Charles, I was the vice captain of the first football team and I was also the head of the sports council. Um, St. Charles did really well at teaching me about discipline, being neat, being tidy, having respect for everyone around you. I think they did a great job in that, having the right attitude that really taught me the right attitude and gave me the tools I needed to take on into the world with me. And so when my time at St. Charles College was over, I decided that I really, really wanted to pursue something in football. So I left for the home of football, England, and I joined an academy there in Peterborough, just outside of London. It was called Elite Football Academy. I spent six months here, and this is where I really found my position playing as a centre half. I'd always thought that I would be a right back, but I was told that I was too slow. You know, there was weaknesses in my game and speed was one of them. So I'd, as much as I try to work on it, you know, I'd play to my strengths, which was actual strength. I could always bully people off the ball and win headers and go out for corners, score goals, come back into my own box, head the ball out and do a good job defensively. Another strength that comes with that position is my ability to lead from the back and call out plays and give information to my midfielders. And you really kind of pull the strings at the back as a center half. So it's a vital position because you kind of have everything laid out in front of you. So it's really, really important that you talk, you be very vocal, you lead, you're strong. And this is where I really started excelling. And because of this, I was chosen to join an academy in France, the Montpellier Herald Sports Academy. Um, this was really, really challenging because they only wanted to speak French. I mean, it was tough getting to a brand new environment, different cultures. They would eat croissants for breakfast with Nutella the whole time. And I was used to my eggs and, and toast and bacon. So everything was challenging and I really had to learn French to be able to adapt because the coaches would speak French, the players would speak French. Although they did a really good job at translating and being friendly and taking me in. If you didn't speak French, you, you wouldn't understand most of what's going on there. So I was really, really, really pushing myself to learn French. And because of that, you know, I can now speak French as as fluently as, you know, as I can speak other languages that it's like Afrikaans and English. And so I really, really learned a lot there. But unfortunately, you know, it just wasn't meant to be the place for me to be at. So I was cut from the academy and told no again. Um, something I was getting quite accustomed to is the word no and you're not good enough. And so um, 
you know, I went back to England. My aunt and uncle live in Manchester, so I was lucky enough to have them nearby. So I stayed there for a while, and while I was there, you know, trying to figure out what to do, having no clue, thinking like I've just lost it in life, I got a call from a club in in Lithuania. So I went out there to um, FK Utenis, and you know, I was on trial there for a while, and they wanted to sign me, but because of my passport and being a foreign player, they had to pay taxes. They weren't too interested on that, so I jumped on over to the next country, Latvia. And I ended up signing for a team in the second division of Latvia called Football Clubbers Auda in Riga. Um, you know, I really enjoyed it there. And again, I'm just learning about football the whole time and expanding my game. And pretty much the same thing ended up happening. The taxes and my passport, being a non-European player, they pretty much told me no again. So, you know, I'd been trying so hard and putting everything into it. And I just kept being told no. So I just decided it would be the best to go back to South Africa. This this probably all happened over the five year period, you know, working hard for something and you just keep getting told no. So I come back to South Africa and I joined the Sharks Soccer Academy in Durban. And, you know, they're linked with Amazulu, so I thought this would be a good, good deal. But I don't know, it just didn't work out the way I thought it would. And I was just really, really frustrated at this time, you know, being told no again and you keep putting so much into something and you get nothing out um, but you know it's all part of God's plan because in Durban where I was living I had a view of the harbour and every morning I'd have my coffee with my cousin and the ship would roll in saying MSC, MSC, MSC and at this point in life I was looking at a few colleges to go to America to play college soccer and you know I was really confused of what to do, stay in South Africa, leave and the morning when I got a message from a coach called Matt Reeb at Murray State College, whose initials are MSC, I seen the ship roll up in the harbor. And, you know, this was definitely a sign from God that this was the place for me to go to. So after talking to my parents who have always supported me nonstop, I mean, their continuous support is definitely something that's kept me going, always believing in me no matter what, even when I don't believe in myself, They've been the ones that have been there for me, my family. I'm just so grateful for them. My aunt and uncle, my cousins in Manchester, my mom and dad and my sisters, my brother-in-law, my niece and nephew in South Africa. You know, they're just really the ones that give me my why. And some days when it's really hard and you think to yourself, why am I doing this? You know, you think of your family and the ones you're doing it for. And in the process, you don't even realize it, but you are inspiring others. I've had messages from kids at school who joined St. Charles College after my time and, you know, they heard about me and they were messaging me, how am I doing this, how am I doing that? And you don't realize it, but you become an inspiration to someone and you can't give up, you know? What if someone you look up to gives up? That's not a good good role model, I don't think. So anyway, I ended up going to America, to Murray State College, and this is where I actually am still right now. And in my first year, I was a freshman. I was feeling really, really nervous about getting back into school after five years with no academics. So balancing academics and football, trying, it was really, really difficult. Um, I managed to maintain a 4.0 GPA, which is the grade point average of all A's. And I was the captain of the Murray State College team as a freshman. So that was really difficult to maintain and I'm in my second year now and I'm still the captain of the team and we're doing really well so far. We've played nine games, won eight and drawn one. Um, this is just all down to hard work, you know, like I've been told no so many times in my life. I've jumped around Europe, you know, pretty much having nowhere to go. And it's really tough sometimes, you know, you get to a point where you think about, you think to yourself, why am I doing this? Like, you know, there's no point. And you get those days where you have no motivation at all. So you need to find motivation, external motivation. What I do is I like to listen to a lot of motivational speakers. They really help you out, you know, and they give you some advice and some laugh stories. And, you know, you just got to look and find something in your life that's worth fighting for. And another thing is like, I never really had much recognition, you know, being cut from teams the whole time and 
you just got to keep on working no matter what you can't give up i mean everyone who's invested in you everyone who's looking up to you everyone who's seeing your story and being moved and motivated for it when you get up at five o'clock in the morning and everyone's sleeping you know that's that's why you do it you want to get ahead of everyone because if you were where you wanted to be you would be there already if you were good enough from the start you'd be there already you get talented guys on the field i mean they'd walk onto the field skill 10 guys score 10 goals and you know they still won't make it anywhere because they're not grinders they don't know how to control their talent um there's a saying um that i love it goes hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and that is so true all the pro academies and all the top places I've been, there's been really, really good players with all the talents in the world and they get nowhere because they don't have the right mindset. So I think mindset is one of the biggest deals in this game, you know, even in life. Your mindset, your attitude, if you take everything on with the right attitude, because I was stuck in a mind frame where it's like, oh no, they're going to say no again. I'm scared of this, I'm scared of that. You know, and you got to take the no's and turn it into something positive. You know, you got to use that as your fuel, your motivation. And I think I've really done that. I finally clicked at that. And last year I made the All-American team um, for my my league, my college league. And I mean, that's like my first recognition I got. So, I mean, I finished school in 2015 and it's 2019. I mean, I've been working at this goal for over 10 years. It's taken 10 years to get one thing of recognition like that. Um, it all comes down to not giving up no matter what they say you can't listen to what people say or what people think of you because if you just take into account of what people think of you you won't be anything you got to believe in yourself have confidence back it up with hard work and never give up i mean that's the main key if i had to give any advice to someone that's out there an aspiring soccer player is work hard number one work hard and do everything you can, you know, leave no stones unturned, give it a shot and just go for it.